Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Hager number BB1279, 4.5 by 4, full mortise, standard weight, 5 knuckle, ball bearing, steel based, removable pin uh, hinge is what it is, and an oil rubbed bronze finish. Be better to call it 640 finish because it's made of steel. This hinge is a little less common in the door hardware industry because it's four inch wide. It's a four and a half by four. However, four and a half by four that size is probably a size that ought to be used a lot more commonly than it really is. Typical hollow metal distributors, us included, four and a half by four and a half is going to be the common hinge. Well, whenever you have um, you know, a four and seven eighths throat knockdown drywall frame going over a typical partition or any sort of condition by which the wall and the face of the frame are either basically flush or the jam stands proud of that by a half of an inch, a four inch wide hinge would be more appropriate, assuming you don't have some requirement of getting around some condition on the wall like chair rail or some sort of unusual other circumstance. Um, because a four and a half by four and a half versus a four and a half by four, this hinge is going to project less from the face of the frame than a four and a half, four and a half. Now it's only a quarter inch, but I can tell you that if in the door industry, um, in that scenario, four and a half by four is the best practice hinge to use. And while you may not notice it, or perhaps you do, a four and a half, four and a half does, when you study the hinge and you look at it installed, you say to yourself, yes, that does stand proud off the frame a little more than it needs to. Why not bring that vertical axis of pivoting in closer to the door, which would make uh, it a more efficient means by which to hang the door. Um, so four and a half by, by four is a great size. This job that we're doing, the client has um, a knockdown drywall frame, Dutch, Dutch door and frame, uh, in fact, and it's a five and seven eighths jammed up, four and seven eighths throat. The door's only going to go to 90 degree for sure because it's in a storeroom um, or in a, um, it's in a high school and they're probably taking, you know, small orders through the door. You, it might be the door that you go to between 3.30 and 4 o'clock to purchase, you know, your gym clothes or whatever it might be. So a four inch would really be a better application. And you're not walking down a hall so that you will notice projecting hardware into the hallway in that scenario, but it's best practice. There's no reason to have a four and a half by four and a half. Uh, four and a half by four is a better, a better mechanical way to do it. Um, and I would argue that it's actually more aesthetically pleasing to have less projecting hardware off the face of the door and frame. So this is a BB ball bearing, two bearing packets on this hinge. It's a 1279, which means a number of things. It's a five knuckle hinge. It's a standard weight hinge. That leaf thickness is 134 thousandths. It is made of steel. It is full mortise. You can see from the swag on the hinge leaves here and here that when they're brought parallel, they're meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door and the frame, giving you that typical margin between the two, uh, the two items. Okay, Full mortise hinge. Uh, this is in US 10B, that's oil rubbed bronze. Uh, this looks a little bit more like 10R to me, uh, antique bronze relieved with a lacquer. Um, it's a little metallic to me to be 10B, but nonetheless, this is Hager's 10B. That 10B is a living finish. Like I said, it would be more appropriate to call it 640. 640 is the BHMA number, Builders Hardware Manufacturers Association number, uh, for oil rub bronze when the base material is steel. 1279 literally means a steel based hinge. If this was the same same hinge as non-ferrous it would be a BB1191. That means non-ferrous. Depending on the finish it will either be stainless, steel, brass, or bronze. Okay, is what you would have. Uh, the BHMA code for oil rub bronze on bronze is 613. So it would be more accurate for Hager to tell us it's 640 finish but you know, um, the U.S. system for sure has been in if has been a system to designate finishes, a standardization of finishes, so that one manufacturer to the next, if you ordered, you know, satin chrome 
uh, lock sets from manufacturer A and you ordered satin chrome hinges and then you ordered satin chrome um, you know, trim and auxiliary hardware uh, for a door, you will get satin chrome and it will, they will be the same finish. Um, and the reason that that U.S. code, that U.S. format was put together, I'm going to say in the 1930s, is because if you look in catalogs that predate that, um, catalogs from the late 19th century, from the early 20th century, they have incredibly colorful names for their finishes. If you look in a Corbin catalog and look at what they call their, their mortise lock trim, you'll see things like Colombian bronze. I have no idea what color that is. Is it bronze? Some type of bronze? So we're predating photography used in these catalogs, so we really can't see it. So you can only imagine what sort of mess, what sort of quantity of return goods authorizations would be requested just because, oh, that's what Colombian bronze looks like? Well, that's not what I want. I want Argentinian bronze. Anyway, you see the point. Um, and the U.S. system came into effect and has been in effect for probably almost 100 years and does give us a standard by which to work to. The BHMA numbers are more, are, give us a better definition of the material. However, BHMA numbers may not necessarily apply to hardware items by manufacturers. So if I wanted satin chrome, that would be 626 if it was made of brass, or it would be 652 if it was made of steel. But what if it's made of zinc? Or what if you're doing some sort of um, finish over plastic, which is incredibly complementary to satin chrome, what would you then call it? Okay, so you see why U.S. numbers are indeed still used. And I think Hager uses the U.S. numbers still because they have been in business for decades before the U.S. system even existed. And we know that 1279 is a steel hinge. We know that 1199 is a non-ferrous hinge, but we don't know what it's made of until you tell me a finish, and they're using the U.S. numbers. Uh, for that. I really think the U.S. numbers are used by people so that they don't have to, um, or maybe because there is no def definition to qualify the finish. So if I'm, if I'm buying cabinet hardware from a manufacturer, and it could be Hager, they've got some knobs, and it's made of zinc, what am I calling it? You know, it's going to be satin nickel. So it's not 619, it's not 646, I think satin nickel is. Um, so the U.S. numbers are still valid, and, but what I think they're really doing is telling you what it looks like. Okay, you can't look at this hinge and know it's made of steel. Um, you know, if you're a hardware person, you could probably say, yeah, that's a steel-based hinge because I know what, it, what that finish looks like. So I think the U.S. system is really telling us, here's what it's going to look like. Okay, um, and if you want to go deeper than that, well, then go deeper than that. You're in a coastal environment, you want to talk about not using steel hinges, go deeper than that. All right, moving forward. Now, four and a half by four, that is really important to know that the height is the first dimension, not the width. Um, what's the first dimension in a door? It's the width. What's the first dimension in a hinge? It's the height. It's different. It's backwards. It's opposite. And I don't actually know why. Um, but it is important to know, like on this hinge, that you're dealing with a four and a half inch tall hinge. Because if you're making a door and frame, you want to know the height of the hinge for the door preparation rather than the width. It's important to know the width in your hardware set, naturally. But if I'm making doors and frames and the hinges are five by four and a half, I need to know what to prep them for. Four and a half by four is actually a quite common hinge in the aluminum storefront in industry. Those aluminum storefront frames generally come right up to the edge of the wall, don't they? They don't project past, but they're usually not, they're either inset or they're flush with the wall, but you'll very commonly see four and a half by four hinges in those applications. Um, it is an industry standard for that industry. And I, like others, did learn the hard way that the height was the first dimension. I did about two dozen openings for the University of Chicago, the University of Illinois at Chicago. That's a different school, University of Illinois at Chicago. Um, and two of the doors were three foot six. And on those openings, rightfully, correctly, the architect called out five by four and a half. Well, I was so new in my career, all the other doors were four and a half, four and a half. I was so new in my career, I said, well, why does he want a wide throw hinge? Why would it be four and a half by five? I looked at the cross section, I couldn't figure it out. Well, I ordered what the client asked for and that's what I sent him. 
contractor calls me and says, hey, these were supposed to be five inch hinges. And I said, yeah, they are. He's like, no, they're not. And I realized my definition of hinge sizing was wrong. I did supply four and a half inch tall hinges, five inch wide. Uh, and while that worked out because they were very low frequency use doors, only 18 gauge, we were able to upgrade the hinge to 180 thousandths and then give him a four and a half by four and a half inch hinge. So we weren't pulling doors and frames off the job, thankfully. But you learn, I learned not to assume uh, the size of a hinge and how it goes. You can get away with the ignorance of not knowing it if, there, if everything you do is four and a half by four and a half at a certain point. Um, this is a removable pin hinge. Uh, I can stick an instrument in here and I can drive that pin out and that would be really perfect for an in-swinging door as are these doors on this Dutch door application. They swing into the room. If you were swinging out of the room you would certainly want to have a security pin feature like non-removable pin known as NRP or maybe something else like a security stud um, added to it. If it's a non-removable pin, which is the most absolute, most common uh, security pin feature that there is, there would be a hole drilled and tapped right about here that a set screw would be inserted in. The pin would have a groove in it so that when you tighten the set screw in, it will set into that groove in the pin, preventing you from driving the pin out. And I can tell you from first-hand experience, it's basically impossible to drive that pin out. So security pin hinges are not only very effective and they accomplish the task that they're charged with um, but would be standard practice for any outswinging door. I mean unless it's a closet. If you have a closet that has a passage set on it I wouldn't be putting an NRP on that. There's no reason to do that. Um, but exterior doors that have locks would need to, uh, any sort of locking uh, functionality, you'd want a non-removable pin. This is a button tip hinge the way it was said to me, it looks like the button on your shirt. Just a button tip. You can do this in button tip or ball tip, the most common of the decorative tips. Uh, steeple, urn, acorn tip, those are available as well. This is going to have um, a typical template pattern on the hinge screw. The hinge screws will be a template pattern. All machine and all wood are supplied with this uh, hinge from Hager which um, I would not consider it standard that you're always going to get enough screws to do wood door, wood frame, or a steel door, steel, steel frame, or half and half. Specify when you're ordering them what you want uh, so that you get the correct number of fasteners or the correct uh, mixture or combination of fasteners. Now I was talking about the location of the holes earlier. This half moon or half circle pattern is called the template pattern and the template pattern refers to the precise location of these holes as measured from either end or from the edge to their center line. It's a standard that for sure is over is 50 years old if not older and is again known as the template pattern. So we can look at a document called template to look at the locations of what a template pattern is. And if you're not sure if those match what you have, by all means look at the template before ordering the hinges. But if you're ordering anything typical and common in a four and a half inch tall hinge, these locations are going to fit in a commercial setting. Um, you get into three and a half, three and a half and four by four uh, residential hinges, now you're gonna have a lot of different hole patterns, many in fact. Um, I could probably think of 15 or more uh, just from a couple of manufacturers. So you really need to check. Um, I have replaced hinges on doors where I've had to drill the hinge holes out, dowel them, glue them with, and then dowel them, hold that in with glue, come back and route the dowel ends clean, re-drill, uh, pre-drill, and then reattach the hinges. Not a big deal conceptually to do that, but nonetheless it's work. So you'll want to avoid the unknown of bumping into needing to dowel everything. Um, probably going to be pretty uncommon in a four and a half inch hinge. I'm, I'm not familiar with four and a half inch hinges where they get into um, a non-template pattern. You get into bigger hinges, five inches still template. You get into hinges that are six, seven, eight inch tall, they're going to have some really odd locations for holes, meaning they won't really follow a half moon pattern so you'll want to investigate that. It's fascinating if you get into it. That link to the template will also show you 
the other sizes of hinges and they get into the four and a half by four then the square hinge and then the other hinges are wide throw hinges they're wider than they are tall uh, the different part numbers that those this template applies to your two knuckle five knuckle three knuckle hinges ferrous based non ferrous based and then again of course the location of those holes there's a link below this video to the product catalog that's going to allow you to review lots of hinges from Hager and I would um, encourage you to review that you may not want a five knuckle hinge you might want a three knuckle hinge um, aesthetically they look uh, different uh, three knuckle hinges are very uncommon two knuckle are even less common um, but you know you might be looking for something a little bit out of the ordinary and a three knuckle hinge would certainly do that they give lots of technical details in that product catalog there is a installation instruction that installation instruction will be gone by the time you see this uh, video because it doesn't apply. It's there in error. Um, technical drawing. It's also, yeah, that doesn't apply. So you've got product catalog and template uh, that are there. Other options, you can do uh, radius corner. You can do an RC BB1279. That would give you quarter inch radius. That's not unheard of. You can have a exterior entry door on a home that they've used four and a half inch but they've left the corners of the hinge at a quarter inch radius that's because when they route that door and frame they're using a half inch carbide uh, two flute router bit and they're not going back after they route that to finish off the corners okay finally there's a link below this video to the manufacturers page where you can pull up not only all of the uh, Hager products that we sell but a link to the manufacturers website as well as a link to the full product catalog. The name Hager Hinge is synonymous with hinges, but I'll tell you, Hager does a lot more than just hinges. And in fact, it would be faster to tell you what they don't do. They don't do doors and frames themselves, but everything else, hinges, lock sets, exit devices, electrified hardware, uh, door closers, trim and auxiliary, weather stripping, sliding door hardware, signage, accessory hardware like uh, frame, uh, fillers used in steel doors and frames, they provide all of that. They are almost, you could be a door and frame distributor and get everything else that you need for those openings from a single source. And that actually is one reason that distributors are attracted to Hager because it's one PO from one manufacturer. Uh, they've been in business since about 1850-ish when Polk was president. And that's a fact that Bob, uh, Hager is quite proud of. Um, and that does certainly come through when you communicate to them. If you have any questions on the Hager BB... 1279, four and a half by four, and a 10B finish. And of course, it's available in all the common finishes your chromes, your brasses, your nickels, satin polished, oil rubbed, uh, prime coats. Being Hager, they can certainly entertain custom finishes as well. They, they can finish products. Any questions on this or any other Hager product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.